So here we are in the Team City Web UI console. The landing page of the Team City Web UI is the project listing page. As discussed earlier, a project in Team City is a collection of built configurations. Team City project can correspond to a software project, a specific version or release of a project, or any other logical grouping of built configurations. The project has a name, an ID, and an optional description. Let's explore other sections on this page and get familiar with them. If we click on the section next to the project, on the Changes tab, we will see all the changes which have been made to the source within the version control system. Monitoring the quality of code base is essential for a development team. A project developer needs to see whether his or her commit caused a build failure. The Changes section of the Team City Web UI allows us to review the commits made by all Team City users and see how they have affected the builds. We can filter the results with the user selector on the page. By default, the page shows the changes made by the currently logged on user. Each change has a new pie chart icon showing some information about the builds affected by the change. Hovering over or clicking the pie chart icon gives a visual representation of how the user's commits have affected different builds. Moving on to the agent section of the Team City Web UI, this section provides us comprehensive information about the Team City agents. A Team City build agent is a piece of software which listens for commands from the Team City server and starts the actual build processes. On this page, we can see the list of agents connected to the Team City server. Moving on, the list of builds waiting to be run can be viewed on the build queue section. The build queue is the list of builds that were triggered and are waiting to be started. Team City will distribute them to compatible build agents as soon as the agents become idle. This page shows information about the queued builds like the configuration name, estimated time duration, the event which triggered the build, etc. Now let's move back to the project view. Here I have configured one project called tutorialdemo.net and we have two objects underneath it. These two objects are our build configurations. As discussed earlier, a build configuration is a type of a build. It is basically a collection of settings and steps which are used to start and manage a build. These settings include version control settings, build steps, environment parameters, build triggers, and others. A build configuration belongs to a project and contains builds. Some examples of build configurations are integration test configuration, which is responsible for running integration test pipeline, nightly build configuration, which is responsible for building the code overnight, deploy to QA configuration, which builds and deploys the code to QA environment, etc. Let's take a closer look at our build configuration, which we have configured for our project. The build configuration homepage provides the configuration details and also enables us to take various actions for the configuration. The pending changes section shows us the changes which have been checked into the version control system, but have not been built by any builds. The current status section shows the status of the build configuration and if applicable, the number of queued builds, the progress details of running builds, the number and agent for any failed builds. The recent history section lists the builds of current build configuration. The most recent builds will be shown here. The rest of the build configuration details are separated into several tabs whose number may vary depending upon the server or project configuration. For instance, dependencies, Team City integrations with other tools, etc. Let's inspect these tabs now. If we want to see a full list of build history, we should just go to the history tab. The build history basically is a historical record of past builds produced by Team City. We may also filter the build by agent name. We could do that by typing the agent name in the agent selector input field. Next tab is the change logs tab, which is similar to the changes section on the top project level. But the difference is that this change log section contains the changes only for this particular build configuration. By default, this section lists the changes from builds finished during last 14 days. Here also we can filter the changes by users. To get more details about the commits, we can also see the files in the change set. If we click on one of the files within the commits, an embedded compare tool will show us the changes in that particular file. Team City can be integrated with our issue tracker systems like Jira to provide us a comprehensive view of our development project. 
So the next tab is the issue log tab, which is where all the issues will be listed. We do not have any issue tracker integrated with our Team3 instance at this time. So now moving on to the statistics tab. Here we will see the charts for all the statistical data collected by Team3 server over time. The stats information is available at build configuration level. These charts demonstrate the successful build rate, the build duration, time the build spent in queue, time that took to fix the tests, artifact size, and the test count. The charts also show code coverage, duplicates, and inspection results if these are included in the respective build configuration. These charts are very helpful in tracking the code quality and build behavior over time. We know that every build configuration will have some sort of inherent criteria. For example, for a .NET application, we require that .NET framework is installed on the build agent. Furthermore, there may be some other preferential criteria we may define for target agents. For instance, I may want certain agents in certain group to run my build because of performance or isolation reasons. So this tab for compatible agents lists the agents which meet this criteria for a particular build configuration. The next tab is the pending changes tab which lists the changes which have been committed to the version control system but are not built by any build and these changes are waiting to be included in the next build. The next tab is the settings tab and it shows all the elements for a build configuration. We can change the build configuration by clicking edit here or clicking the edit configuration settings on the right upper corner. The build configuration settings have been grouped into several categories. The general settings contains the build configuration name, its ID and optional description etc. Let's try to edit some settings and understand them better. And by the way, if you have any confusion or need any clarifications for any of these input fields, Team3 provides a convenient help shortcut, which is a question mark icon next to the field. Just click it and you will see a very detailed help message pop up. So this is the build number format, which is resolved and assigned to the build number when the build starts. The build number supports various substitutions, which are automatically resolved by Team City at the time of the build. There are things like VCS revision ID, build ID, etc. This makes for a very flexible build number schemes, which may come in handy for complex environments. But in general, using an incremental number is sufficient for most setups. It is still highly recommended that we ensure build numbers are unique. Here is the build counter. The build counter will increase automatically by one for each build. We can use the reset counter link to reset the counter value to one, but it is not recommended that we set the build counter to a lower value once the builds are already running. It may cause a conflict in the build number for certain builds. And the next one is the artifacts path. Here we will identify what are the artifacts which are produced for this build. These artifacts will be saved somewhere in the artifacts directory on the team city build agent where the build is ran. On the build options section, we can set additional options for this build configuration. Let's review these configuration options. Enable hanging build detection. By selecting this option, we can detect hanging builds. A build is considered to be hung if its runtime significantly exceeds the estimated average runtime and the build has not sent any messages since the estimation was exceeded. Team City has to detect average time builds run based on several builds. Thus, if we have a new build configuration, it may make sense to enable this feature after a couple of builds have run so that Team City will have enough information to estimate the average run time. Next option is allow triggering personal builds. Personal builds is a new feature introduced since Team City 9.1. For now, next option is enable status widget. This option enables retrieving the status and basic details of the last build in the build configuration without requiring any user authentication. Please note that this also allows getting the status of any specific build in the build configuration. However, builds cannot be listed and no other information except the build status. The status can be retrieved via the HTML status widget or via REST API. And the last option is limit the number of simultaneously running builds. 
Using this option, we can specify the number of builds the configuration can run simultaneously on all agents. This option helps avoid the situation when all the agents are busy with the builds of a single project. We can enter 0 to allow an unlimited number of builds to run simultaneously. Or for instance, if we don't want two or more builds of this build configuration running at the same time, we will change this value to 1 so that we only have at the most one build running for this build configuration. And now we move on to the version control settings. Version control system root defines the connections to the version control system and consists of several settings. For instance, the path to the source, the username and password and other settings. These settings define how Team3 communicates with the version control system. In our case, our version control system is GitHub. So these settings will have a name, an ID and the fetch URL. And we can also optionally provide a push URL if it's different from the fetch URL. We can also define the branch we want to retrieve. Besides the default branch, we can also add other branches to monitor by this build configuration. Team City supports several version control systems out of the box. For instance, Git, Subversion, CVS, Team Foundation Server, Star Team, ClearCase, Visual Sourceif, etc. Now let's go to the next section, which is the Build Step section. This is the most important section for a build configuration. These build steps here do the actual work and take actions to execute the overall build process. Each build step is represented by a build runner and provides integration with a specific build or test tool. We can add as many build steps to our build configuration as needed. For instance, we can call an AND script or a JUnit or NUnit test runner. Build steps are invoked sequentially. So we talked about build runner and it is a very important concept in Team City. Build runner is a part of Team City that allows integration with specific build tool. For instance, ant, ms build, command line, etc. In a build configuration, the build runner defines how to run a build and report its results. If we click add build step, here we can see a list of available build runners. So here is a list of bundled team runners which ship with Team City. We could extend this list by installing new plugins. Now let's get back to the build steps. In this case, I have defined four steps for this build configuration. The first one is a NuGet installer which installs the missing packages for this .NET application. The next one is a Visual Studio build runner which will build the application and deliver the compiled .NET assemblies. The third step is a command line build runner which just calls the batch file to do certain things. The last one is to run a unit test with MS test. Each of the runners could be very different in terms of settings. We will look into some of them later during the demo. Once a build configuration is created, builds can be triggered manually by clicking the run button or initiated automatically with the help of triggers. A build trigger is a rule which initiates a new build on certain events. So let's have a look at these triggers by navigating to the triggers section. Triggers are used to add builds to the queue either when an event occurs like version control system check-in or periodically with some configurable interval. And Team City comes with several triggers. For instance, the schedule trigger, which can trigger the build on a certain schedule like daily or weekly or a more complicated time schedule with a cron expression. Another example is a finish build trigger, which means that this build configuration will be triggered right after another build is finished. So in this way, we can change some builds together to create a very complex CI and deployment pipeline. Here is another build trigger, the branch remote run trigger. This trigger monitors the version control system repository branches, then triggers a personal build with detected changes. Maven artifacts dependency trigger. It will monitor the Maven artifacts repository. If any of the dependencies of the build configuration have been changed, then it will trigger a build. Similarly, the Maven snapshot dependency trigger. If the snapshot dependency has changed, the build will be triggered. NuGet dependency trigger. If a NuGet dependency has been changed, it will trigger a build. Retry build trigger. If a build of the build configuration has failed, it will retry the build and put it in the queue. So as we can see, Team City provides a lot of flexibility and it is fairly easy to configure it to suit our particular requirement or environment. 
In this build configuration, we have configured a version control system trigger. It monitors the version control system. If there is any new source commit to the version control system, the build will be triggered. Now let's go to the failure conditions section. Here we can define various failure conditions which determine whether the build is failed or succeeded. Like with most features of Team City, here also we have bunch of options available. For instance, we can say if the build ran longer than specified number of minutes, say 30 minutes, we could say this build has failed. Or if the exit code is not zero, or at least one test failed, or an error message is logged by a build runner, or an out of memory or crash is detected, this may also be considered a build failure. There are a lot of very complicated conditions we can define. For instance, we can say if the artifact size is more than 1 GB or the number of classes is less than 100, then the build has failed. Next section is the build feature section. A build feature is a piece of functionality that can affect a build run or reporting of the build results. If we click add build feature button, we will see a list of available build features. For example, the version control system labeling could be used to set a label on a chosen version control system route upon the build completion. And we can define the label pattern as well. And there's also assembly info patcher, which will update the versions of a given pattern in assembly info.cs file in a .NET application. Next section is the dependencies for the build configuration. A build configuration can be made dependent on artifacts or sources of builds from some other build configurations. For snapshot dependencies, TeamCity will run all dependency builds on the sources taken at the moment the build they depend on starts. For instance, if we check this build configuration as a snapshot dependency of my tutorial 1.0.0 build configuration, then when this build is triggered, it will also cause dependency build configuration to trigger a build. For artifact dependencies, before a build is started, all the artifacts this build depends on will be downloaded and placed in their configured target location and then will be used by this particular build. Next, we go on to the parameters. Build parameters provide us with a flexible means of sharing settings and a convenient way of passing settings into a build. Build parameters are name value pairs defined by a user or provided by Team City, which can be used in a build. There are three types of build parameters. Environment variables defined using env prefix. They are passed into the spawn build processes as environment variables. They will be set for all the runners. System properties defined using system.prefix are passed into build scripts of the supported runners. For instance, ant, msbuild, etc. as build tool specific variables. Configuration parameters are passed into the build and are only meant to share settings within a build configuration. And lastly, we go to the agent requirement section. We have mentioned that every build configuration has certain requirements on the build agent. By specifying agent requirements for build configuration, we can control which agents will run the builds for this particular configuration. For instance, an agent must have a certain version of .NET framework installed or a certain version of Java runtime installed. We can specify very flexible agent requirements which take into account number of configuration build parameters or properties. And the agents compatibility section shows a list of agents which are compatible and also incompatible with this configuration. So that was a whirlwind tour of major pieces of functionality and concepts within TeamCity. TeamCity obviously has many more features, but we have covered the major areas. We will be using number of these concepts in subsequent demos. Being familiar with these concepts will certainly help us in setting up our initial CI projects within TeamCity.